Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Sigma Show, episode 51, the first Sigma Show of the Year of Our Lord 2022. Before I let you know who's joining me for an exciting show this week, I was going to say this year, but like this show's not going to last the whole year. It's going to last the entire year, Casey, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> uh, but first we'll go over what our topics are. Uh, not too much in the in terms of big news this week, but you know, we'll, it'll be a fun conversation. Regardless, uh, Ubisoft has just announced that they'll be bringing their uh, Ubisoft Plus subscription service to Xbox Game Pass, uh, which, you know, the, the gift that keeps on giving is Xbox Game Pass. We'll talk about that, uh, as well as some new TV show projects. Uh, one I'm very excited about, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World getting an anime series on Netflix, and one less excited about but probably has potential to be really good, a Fallout TV show coming to Amazon. Uh, so here with me today to talk about these topics are Jay Mate. Hey, yo, it's me. What up? Hey, guys. <laughs> Rexicon Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> no, no, yeah, no one knows who's coming see, first. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the like three different intros right there. <laughs> This really that was delightful. Come on, I, I told Jeff that this was probably going to be a rough show because it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad I, I did not disappoint. It's starting great. <laughs> <laughs> so joining us today as well is Jesse. Well, that's me again. Hi. <laughs> as well as Superman Jeff. Nekamushi. <laughs> right, we're we're back to this, but uh, <laughs> glad to have you guys back. Nice to see you again. Um, let's start things off as we tend to do when we have, uh, kind of light topics to work with. What have you been playing? What you've been watching, et cetera, so on and so forth. Uh, anybody feel like going first? Um, I'd go first. No, all right, there you go. Uh, as far as playing, I've been playing, I got back into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um. Yeah, I saw you on that. Yeah, I took a long break from that. Um, I was going to play The Witcher, but I was like, you know what, Valhalla's already loaded up. Let me get back into Valhalla. So I've been playing to that. I, I need to finish it. Um, I have Do a you know problem. how far you are from finishing it? Like, is it? I can't say I'm very far. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, I, I hear that game is kind of stock full of stuff to do. It is, but it's not. It's not as big as Odyssey was, which is good. Odyssey was huge because you could explore like Greece and like you were going all over the place. This is, you know, just like Wessex around that area, like like with Saxons and, and stuff like that. So it's like that area, it's, while it's big, it's not small in any capacity. It's not uh -huh. as big as Odyssey was and how much content was into it. This is a, a little bit smaller, but also still very big. So I, I would say like maybe like 20 or 30% slowly climbing. Um, but it's 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 good. They added a lot of, uh, since I was away, I felt like uh, the, the the weapons and the armor and stuff like that, was it wasn't much in it. But since I've been away, they've added a lot of DLC and new weapon types and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so. King's Dead 42 just mentioned the Ireland expansion was enjoyable. So they, they put a whole oh, okay. country in that game, I guess. Wow. Yeah. The whole yeah. country. I just, mm -hmm. I just need to wrap my head around this. So I, I've i been following that game very well. It's set in England? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. it's the Vikings coming and and when whatever in history they came and attacked yeah. England. That's what that's right. about. Oh, okay. And they started killing all the monks. Yeah. It's like... Right, <laughs> like, like when the Saxons and stuff start coming over and trying to, it's. I, I think it's going to go into when England became England. It wasn't broke off into all these small yeah. parts, a bunch of different kings. I think it's going to go into that. It's what it looks like it's shaping up to be. Okay, well, I'm more interested in this now. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> you actually like at some parts you actually go to Valhalla. So I mean, not Valhalla, you go to um. I'm, I'm like, you, you die. Like you go. You go. To <laughs> You go to Viking. Right, you heaven. die. You just go to heaven. It's great. You die. That's a little black screen where you run around when you die and you come back. But yeah, you go to Asgard. So it's pretty cool. Like you, it deals with a lot of Norse mythology, which I love. So that's a big, a big plus for for me. Um, I just when a new game comes out and it's something I want to play, I'll start playing it, and then something else will come out, and I'm like, I'll go play that, and then I just don't make it back around. So yeah, I'm, I'm making it a point to finish this. And then after this is The Witcher, not The Witcher, Cyberpunk. <laughs> I'm at the end of it, <laughs> but I left it. So I'm going to finish this first, and then I'm going to Cyberpunk. I'm going to slowly close off my list before Elden Ring comes out next month. Right. If this doesn't mess up your overlay, my camera's broke. Uh, this, no oh. problem. Like, it'll they'll they'll live. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's back now. They'll live <laughs> with the, the small interruption. Oh, 
<coughs> Lampy <coughs> says. <coughs> Lampy adds Asgard Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that name. <laughs> I mean, it, it's um, fitting. It is. It's very fitting. Um, uh, that's all I've been playing. That's all I've had time for because it is, um, like I said, things have been going crazy with work and and the uptick in COVID cases and all that good stuff. So haven't right. had much time. Um, but watching, I've I finished the first season of um, The Will of Time. That was really, really good. Yeah, I did too. I, I enjoyed it. Oh. That's a first. Usually I'm like, oh, I Is really it? thought it was really good. And you're like, well. Uh... <laughs> well, that's because the, the the stuff you really think is good is usually like the DC stuff. And like, they just, just miss all the time. And like, I think you just have a lot of nostalgia for that in particular. <laughs> not <laughs> like, it's just not I'm that good to me. <laughs> last time right. last time we were all, I was on stream with KC and I was like, Oh yeah, I've been watching Will of Time. I think the action's pretty good. And Casey went, You think the action's pretty good? <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. No no no. That was no no no. That was before the episode you were talking about. I hadn't seen the the um, the, the, the solo lady was what you were referring to, right? That was a yeah, that was a really good yeah, episode. That was really good. Yeah. That was like that was a major uptick in what they had been showing before that. Uh, okay, in my opinion. Okay, now I'm with you. Now I'm with you. Which show is that? Uh, Wheel, Wheel of Time. time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he'll do that to you. He's like, yeah, it was really good. And he's like, uh, uh. And I'm like, I mean, I, now you got me questioning whether it was really good or not. Like, yeah, really good. I got to go back and watch it now just to make sure I'm not wrong. You know? Questioning your taste. Yeah. Um, he, re he reviews professionally, so his opinion is correct. So exactly. you, this is true. you know you're I, I wouldn't say it's, I'm, my opinion is not correct. It's mm -hmm. more correct than most other people's opinions. <laughs> Yeah. everything I've liked up until now, and I'm like, wow. Well, the thing is, you can't Who argue with it. You can't right. argue with that because if you <laughs> disagree with Casey, he'll go, well, and he'll, he'll have a spiel about why he's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I apologize for my behavior. <laughs> I'm still not wrong though. Uh, uh, Will of Time really good. Uh, I can't wait for the next season. Um, it was really good. Um, I thought the pacing was great. The characters were great. It did a great job of. Uh, Making you care about each character, like I, I think it did a good job like that. Even like who the person was supposed to be, like the chosen one or whatever, it kept me guessing up until until I knew I knew. And I'm like, okay, I, he's like, I thought I was right in the beginning. Yeah, I was right. Okay, but it yeah, they. Make you I felt the same. Yeah, I'm like, I, it's this guy, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, and then they go, they circle back around. So like, it, it's tropey, but they 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 have a, a fun way of getting to where they're going. Um, and then the world building, the politics within it, um, it was all very interesting. Like, I didn't meet a character that I didn't like or who I felt wasn't an intricate part of the story. Um, aside from that, it is the Book of Boba, which has been really good. Really, really good. Uh, two episodes, not much out yet. Not a lot of progress in the story, but it's, you know, answering some questions about how he got from where he was to where he is now. And also how he made it to... Um, show up on the mandalorian uh second season they've gotten that far already in his uh series well it's just like a backstory telling you how he got from you know what i'm saying i don't yeah well, like from like from like where he first uh disappears soul, in in yeah. yeah in the original trilogy right. to like how yeah. he ends up where the mandalorian is i thought that oh, would take it, a little longer because it's only what like two episodes out right no it's actually not very long it wasn't a very long road it was actually uh oh that's surprising without, <laughs> It wasn't a long road from how he got out the pit to. to well, uh, I guess that makes uh, sense because otherwise they would have to fill in a ton of time. You would think, right? Because <laughs> this was in the Mandalorian season two. He was looking for his armor, so he got out. He got robbed. He's looking for his armor. It just tells you the stuff that happened in between there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that's uh, that's all I've been watching and playing and stuff like that. You know. All right, cool. I see you, Carter Wilbur, in the Facebook chat. Says hello. What's up? Welcome to the stream. What's up, Carter? Uh, anybody want to go next in terms of games, movies, books? I don't know if anybody reads here. I know I don't. Uh, <laughs> I can't read. Reading, like, hey. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll go. I got a PS5. Uh, Ooh, over the nice. Ooh. I mir miraculously decided I wanted one. Found one somehow at a retail store, not a scalper. Wow. It Got it ordered and got it the next day. And it was Christmas Eve. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> Dang. Well, that's, a, that's a Christmas miracle I've ever heard. I've had of. a string of good luck recently, and I, that was one of them. Because a friend of mine's been like, "Oh, I really want one now that you've got one," and he just can't find one anywhere. It's back to just being completely 
Dead. You, you literally wow. bought the last one available. Yeah. Well, I, went, I, I, I typed in, I want a PS5. And then a link came up and it just worked. And I was like, oh, I, I thought I was being scammed. I was like, this is... This right. is hey, maybe easy. maybe your PS5 has ghosts in it. You don't know. Yeah, ghosts. I'm, I'm down. I'm <laughs> it's down worth it. Anything. But yeah, Are, are they of Tashima though? Hmm? <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, it was... that's that's so on the nose. I love it. <laughs> I got everything. I completed Ratchet and Clank. I hundred percent did that. Nice. Um, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I, it's such a stunning game. Um, Spider Man Miles Morales. I hundred percent did that. Oh wow! Um, damn, that game is DLC. Yeah, it's that. short. It's really short. It's stupidly short. I feel sorry for the dev team. They were probably like, get something out on the PS5 now. And they were like, um, okay. And they just chucked it out. But it's fantastic. Like it's it's incredibly it's incredibly written. It's more um, more Spider Man, but it's a it's a more interesting story, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent story wise. It's just a lot more condensed. I yeah. just wanted more more of it. So it it's not a bad experience. It was just I wish there was more. Morales, um, Returnal. I've played uh, a bit of Returnal. <laughs> I, I really want to start that. The mood. It's yeah. I won't spoil anything, but it, kind of an interesting story. It's just a roguelike with lots of particle effects. It's very <laughs> look at this, look at this. Don't pay attention to what you're actually doing. Um, so that's good. And I've been waiting ages to get Demon Souls mm. uh, because that's going to be the next episode for Anatomy. And I finally got my hands on it yesterday, and. That game's shit. Oh wow! Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I was not expecting that. Wait, was it your I... first? Is it your first time playing Demon Souls? It's my first time playing it, and it's not a like Blue Point. I've done an absolutely incredible job remastering it. It is stunning, and the game feel wise, it is beautiful. Like it looks and feels incredible. The core problems with it is just Demon Souls from like thirteen years ago, which is mm-hmm. where the series began, and it's got yeah. this really bad problem of having positive feedback loops that punish people for being bad and it makes the game worse if you are struggling which Ooh. is not great design in, in in my opinion and my video is going to go into that but i got it mm. yesterday and i was really excited because i was like it's a souls game i've never touched it's it's going to be great and then i finally got my hands on it and i was like i there are some problems with this but I'm yeah. I'm gonna have to push through because I've got another like week of playing it because it's gonna be the next episode. But other than that, yeah, I've just been <laughs> makes sense. Waiting for Monsanto Rice to come to PC. Ooh. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll I'll jump on to that train though because I've actually been playing a ton of Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> I'm doing the PC review, but it's still under embargo, so I can't talk about that. But because I own that game on Switch, I didn't want all of my progress to be on pc <laughs> so i've mm-hmm. just been playing it on switch and i got yeah. m- i got mad hooked onto monster hunter rise because uh, oh, jeff man. jeff will tell you like i fell in love with monster hunter world it was probably my favorite game uh when it came out that year uh, and I, I played monster hunters before like on the the uh 3ds but like it just probably because of the form factor and the control like it was i i couldn't stick with it like something felt off about the way it controlled once they moved that experience to a major console it just worked and like that feedback loop of uh, having those really fun monster fights, using those really fun weapon classes, uh, you know, hunting to get the specific things you need, min-maxing your gear. Like, it's just so addictive. And all of that still exists in Rise, but Rise cuts out a lot of the tedium and a lot of the uh, downtime between actually fighting monsters, which it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Like, if overall, it feels a little more hollow. Like, you're kind of mm-hmm. just... Uh, checking off a list of monsters and like there's not all this development or preamble for like the guys you're going up against at least not at first um but then you get in those fights really quick and those fights are more fun than they've ever been because that wire bug oh boy if they don't bring that back to whatever comes next in monster hunter world they have made a massive mistake yeah (laughs) like i will be very disappointed yeah it looks really good for traversal i was like oh that looks they should have had that world like that would have made like traveling around so much easier like you had that one bug that you could only hook on certain parts and pull yourself right up. yeah like environmentally you could like do little hook yeah. shot swing things but this is like just do it in the air wherever who gives a shit <laughs> i'm really looking forward to getting into it i i i've wanted to play it i'm similar to ukc where 
Monster Hunter World was one of my favorite games of that year when it came out. It was I've put I think nearly 300 hours into it on the PC. I absolutely adore it. And I specifically haven't got it on the Switch because I've wanted to wait to play it with friends. I've wanted to have that mm. four player experience and I was one of the only people who had a Switch then, so I I had no one to play with, so I was like, I'll wait. But I really like how they've from the trailers and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it looks like they've differentiated a lot of the monsters in the sense of world it's very diverse but a lot of things are just dragons right. and variations yeah. of dragons right and like almost everything in there is a, a wyvern right aren't they all yeah. called wyverns <laughs> yeah and it's like they were i know in a lot of the original um monster Hunter games they were crazy they were really wacky and the the creatures were insane and world seems like they were catering a lot more to the west and yeah that makes sense kind of feel like we loved dragons because that's the, the the western thing we've got dragons and in rise in the trailers at least it, there was like a platypus kind of looking monster spiders right. yep. um cranes and i was like i i want this i i need this this just looks like a cr crazier more developed yeah. world yeah and the thing is those are all like throwback monsters right yeah mm -hmm. like a lot of them have like been like there's so many freaking monsters in that universe like i i had no idea which is why it felt kind of weird that I was seeing all these brand new creatures that I'd never seen before. And like, you get kind of like this uh, haiku-esque poem. Like, it's like someone is reciting like a poem as an intro yeah. for like their uh, their opening cutscene for every new monster you face. But like, that's fun and all, but it doesn't really tell me much about the monster. Like, none of the characters talk specifically about the monster other than the main one that you fight at the end of the, the single player story, which is pretty short. It's like maybe six to... About like the six hours, you'll get to that guy, and like you will see credits roll. But of course, it's Monster Hunter, so like that's not the end of the game at all. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Like that's the, that's kind of the only, at least at first, the significant, the only significant monster is that Magnamalo guy, who I think is new. But all these other cool ones, like I don't really hear much about because they're returning, and I guess other older players would have known them already. So like it just felt a yeah. little hollow in that way. Not very accessible to new players, maybe a little bit, not to get that information. Right, story wise, not not gameplay wise. But that was what threw me off. A of world was that um, you wind up fighting the same monster a couple times in different forms. It'll be like, you know, uh, Nergigante, Nergigante Arc, Nergigante Arc. Yeah, tempered. Like, yeah. yeah, like I, I get there harder and, and and stuff like that. But I want a different monster. Like, or give me something bigger and badder, not something the same. Oh, just slightly tweak the. The difficulty on it yeah what is it like there's raffalos and then there's pink raffalos right yeah and it's like <laughs> yeah the okay, azure it and, and it, I think it does like, what? poison it's like right mm -hmm. yeah uh, something else please something else oh. uh but Jesse. other than oh no, i'm sorry i just wanted to real quick talk about cobra yeah. kai <laughs> <gasps> oh you're loving that I, at the moment, I, are you? yeah I, I finished that uh this weekend cobra kai season four um it's 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 a, it's one of those shows that's like dumb but like it knows it's dumb so like i'm on board with it like yeah. several times they'll talk about how ridiculous the situation they're in is like someone either on the outside or someone who's involved in it would be like yo we just had like a whole war over karate clubs <laughs> like <laughs> like it's it's really stupid but like it, it works because like there's actual like stakes built behind like these dumb high school teen dramas and like they legit fight in the streets and no one calls the police. <laughs> like it's, just, it's 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 insane. Like these are these are children. <laughs> at, at one point a gro at one point a grown man uh, enters a high school and tries to recruit girls for his dojo and no one stops him. Like he's just <laughs> he's just what? handing out flyers to all the the young cheerleaders on the. <laughs> <laughs> no one talks to this man about anything. It's weird. But, like, it's it's a show that's kind of ripped straight out of the 80s. There's a lot of 80s tropes in it. But they, they have fun with it. Like, they know it's dumb. They know it's over the top. Uh, but the, the fight choreography, surprisingly good. Like, I think they've actually brought it up. Because, like, it, it was okay up to this point. Like, I it got to the point where, like, after I finished Cobra Kai, I would have to go find an actual, like, martial arts movie to watch. Because I was, like, jonesing. But, like, the, some of the finale fights... In Cobra Kai are sick. Like they, okay. they go in. So like I'm I'm way into it. I cannot wait for the next season because uh there's good stuff in there. 
It is dumb though, so be, be prepared. How are you for that. Yeah, how are you finding the narrative? Like, because it's dumb, but is it is it holding your attention? Is it is it? It keeping, is keeping... like so, some of the main characters um, can can get that quality where they become annoying. Where it's like, like if you would just do this, but it's like it is that character. Like that character has a history of being annoying or irrational for this specific reason, so you can understand why. Yeah. But even the more ridiculous situations. They they do their best to try and make it make sense, at least in their world, like because some of the characters who act like no adult would ever act in terms of taking care of children or dealing with other people. It's like, no, there's something wrong with this person. And this is what's wrong with that person. They tell you why. Yeah. And it's like, OK, well, maybe not all people would re react this way, but maybe this person does because of what happened to them. Right. Okay. So like you can you can get behind it. Yeah, I'm done. I might have to check it out. Yeah, it's it's, it's fun. It's like a guilty pleasure. Yeah, like but at that's... first uh, I fell off of it because, like, it got into that like CW vibe where it was like too much <laughs> like teen drama. Like, yeah. Like, uh, no, like they in season four specifically they do dial that back some. It comes back like maybe in the later half, but I think it's used well then. But like, yeah, it was like all kids all the time for like the last two seasons almost, and like they they dial that back a bit in this one. Is Cobra Kai, it's based on like Karate Kid, isn't karate it? Kid. Yes, it's basically okay. a continuation of the Karate Kid. Uh, I was going to say trilogy, but there's a fourth one, the next Karate Kid. And I'm wondering if they're going to bring, what? uh, what's her name, Hilary Swank, who was the star of the fourth one? I wonder if they're going to bring her in. Yeah, yeah, Because it, yeah, it has returning that. characters, right? It, yeah, there's so many returning characters. I'm surprised it has so many, like, I guess that franchise isn't that old, because almost no one from that original cast has died or quit acting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like Pat Morita has passed away, but they they talk about him literally every single episode. Like they show right. flashbacks of the old movies and stuff too. Wow, so he's very much like involved in the centerpiece of everything that's going on. Uh -huh. So it's cool. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. How about you, Jesse? Uh, my partner and I started watching True Blood, the hottest yes. show of two thousand eight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're, re we're really I... on top of things here in this house. No, I, that I'm show is I like True Blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, I'm, it's bananas. I'm. We just we beat we beat we finished it. We beat season one. Good job, man. Really showed it. It took me weeks to beat season one. Yeah, it's a lot to it. Uh, like it's so weird. There That's is a good word. Yeah, like there's a lot going on with it, and not all of it is good, but I think all of it works ultimately in its favor so like they love doing throwing a trope at you and you're gonna be like oh this is gonna happen and then that absolutely happens uh -huh. but they do that nine times in a row so that the tenth time they really make you feel surprised mm. when they don't do it because <laughs> they just lull you into it it's it, and like i i do enjoy the fact that like pretty much anything goes like if someone can read minds yeah don't worry about it. Keep going. Like someone can shape change into dogs and whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Keep going. Like it is absolutely wacky, and I am enjoying that part of it. Um, just unabashedly yeah, bizarre. I've never seen it. Maybe I'll have to check that out. Maybe I'll I'll dual screen Cobra Kai and True Blood <laughs> at the same time, and then when we talk about it on the next show, I just feel like, yeah, I've been watching this weird like karate vampire show. It's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> they could they form in my mind <laughs> well, I, 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 what, read minds. <laughs> what's your uh what's your threshold for putting up with horny vampires though because yeah it's that, an hbo show so yeah all all the sex all the time <laughs> yeah I'm, it, I'm i'm chill with horny vampires i mean okay that can be on the record for for j mate <laughs> <laughs> along with the other stuff like doesn't like demon souls is chill with horny vampires <laughs> so yeah maybe i like it I don't know. It's fun though. I I, it's, I, I am agree. enjoying it. We started season two, so I'm looking forward to it. It's like seven seasons. I don't know what. I don't think they'll be able to keep up what I enjoy for seven seasons. But mm. I am willing to find out when it falls off the wagon for me. Ooh. Like I I liked how it escalates and how it continues yeah. to build on its world. I do think its final season kind of drags to a conclusion. Mm. Like, it's not like a super satisfying ending, but like by that point, it's like, all right, I got to see how this ends anyway. <laughs> you're, you're invested. You're, held yeah, you're, like, you're way too invested by that point. Got to finish it. Yeah. But I still don't think it was like 
terror like it wasn't like a it ruined the whole show kind of ending right it was yeah. just weaker than it started got it uh we also started watching cowboy bebop we watched the anime with some friends because my partner and i both never seen the whole thing and then we started the live action one a few weeks ago and you know what i'm enjoying it yeah, so apparently it's a it good got time horrible reviews yeah it's fun well the, I, I think it got mixed reviews like i like, cause they, I've seen a lot of people who liked it, and I have seen some people who are like, "Oh, it's trash. It's terrible. It's whatever." But like Netflix, they won't deal with that. Like, if it's not universally loved, it goes in the trash can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rip Marco Polo for that one. Yeah, that's I loved it. I'm actually surprised it got two seasons for how mixed the reactions were. But that was earlier Netflix when they didn't have as much right. to throw around, so they probably invested a little more into it. That's a good show, yeah, by the way. I love it. Yeah. I think yeah, it is good. Did. Yeah. Yeah. I thought uh, it was good as well. But yeah, the live action show is fun. Like, it's cool to watch it separate, like, knowing the anime now. And, like, I understand it's not supposed to be the same thing. Like, if you're comparing it to the anime, you're, you're going to be disappointed because the anime is, like, built to be Kuleshov Effect, the show, where mm -hmm. the Netflix series is built to be a straightforward narrative beginning to end to watch in order rather than seeing pieces and then putting together headcanon and bits of information because of misplaced pieces you've seen of episodes out of order. Mm. Um, and the characters are different. I really enjoy John Cho as Spike Spiegel. I think he does He's a pretty great. good job. He is yeah. really the, great. The dude who plays Jet is oh, man. Yeah, delightful. I mm -hmm. love Jet in that. Uh, I'm enjoying Faye. I feel like her performance is a little weird a bit, but I like some of what she's doing. She's probably the biggest shift, like, personality-wise, I, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of it, is, like, I, it's harder for me to view her that different, where I feel like there's more pieces. But she's also written, and that's not, like, the actor thing. Like, she is written completely different from Faye. And it makes mm -hmm. sense, because Faye and Spike in the anime are similar style characters, of being, like, very loose, kind of aloof, um, very live-now, and that they probably read it wrote it specifically to have more contrast between them mm -hmm. so makes sense yeah but i'm liking it i want to keep watching it vicious's wig is horrible i agree on everybody <laughs> with that his wig is atrocious i don't know what they were thinking yeah but that's you know. that's that's probably the biggest misstep is just the yeah. characterization of Vicious, like Vicious being included in most of the plot to begin with, I think was a mistake. Like they could have, right. well, who knows? They they want they were going to tell a different story. They needed you know a villain to be there for most of yeah. it. But yeah, the the choices they made just he just wasn't that menacing at all. Yeah, he's yeah. very over the top, very over the top, very Saturday morning cartoon villainous. <laughs> yeah, and they that's a okay. I'm gonna try not to talk about the whole freaking cowboy bebop this whole time. But that is a, an issue that I brought up. That it seems like in episode one was a big deal. And mm -hmm. has been somehow ironed out as the like through episode four, which is weird, but cool. <clears throat> is like that displacement of over the top elements and very grounded elements that you were talking about, Jeff. So it's like the first episode, their costumes, super stylized. Love them. Great physical representations of the anime style. But then you will see them next to like a construction worker wearing modern day construction worker stuff in front of a brick building. And you're like, now they feel completely out of place because mm -hmm. their sci-fi future stylized and you've plopped them into like a freaking like 90s set of some alley in New York or whatever. And that's funny because that's how anime worked. Like your protagonist has like purple and pink hair <laughs> and then everybody else is just black and brown. Who's, who's the JoJo <laughs> villain? What's the JoJo villain? Who is it? Right. Oh, it's the dude who twice as tall as everyone. <laughs> it's jacked. But, it, but usually in anime, like everything else is so stylized, at least in like the drawing technique a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is very much what you're talking about where they stand out so hard. That you're like, I'm gonna my eyes glaze over everybody else. Um That's but fair. yeah, so that kind of was annoying, but hey, I'm it's okay. I feel like the show as a whole is pretty good. Um agreed. And then real fast, we beat the Tomb Raider remake from 2013. My partner and I played through that. Oh nice. 
if you ever want a score that should or like a game that scores like the dead center of any <laughs> scoring system, it is Tomb Raider 2013. Yep. It's a supremely a game. average game. It, yeah, it is amazingly <laughs> average. Like nothing about it is that bad. <laughs> but nothing rises above that either. Like it is nope. flatline. It is a playable experience. It, it, it is. And I can't not recommend it. Like, no, don't. Because, like, it, it, it's, it's got something. I I would recommend going to the sequels because I feel like they get a little bit more okay. uh, story-focused and, and they start exploring more interesting things. But they are also, like, you have described it in a way. Like, they are just, yeah. They they are kind of middle of the road games. I do enjoy them though. Like you said, I can't say don't play them, but yeah. I couldn't rave about them. I couldn't be like, yeah. these are fantastic. The gameplay is amazing. The narrative so yeah. Well I have I have to keep remembering that I also played that first game because like unless someone else brings it up, like it never comes to mind that that's a game mm-hmm. I actually played. <laughs> but uh, Li Wami is also saying like the sequel is better. So. Yeah, okay. maybe, and that makes yeah. sense. Like, you know, it was their first time trying to reboot it. The se- second one, maybe they take more risks and and whatnot. So, it's probably true. It's their second time rebooting the series, actually. <clears throat> <laughs> that is that is also true. I actually yeah. wrote about this. Check the escapist site uh, about franchises that need to die. Uh, I'll plug this again later, but it just thought it made <laughs> sense right now. <laughs> but does that wrap things up for you, Jesse? Uh, technically, no. But I'm done talking, so let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> I mean, all right. If that's how you feel, uh, so we'll, wanna... we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take up all the time. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, we'll move on to um, our first topic, which is the introduction of Ubisoft Plus. That is the name of their premium service, right? I just said that, but I forgot I if that's what it's called or not. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, you're right. yeah, Ubisoft yeah. Plus. So they're supposedly bringing the subscription service to Xbox Game Pass, um, but with a caveat. Apparently, it'll be looped in as part of the Game Pass app, but I do think it is still going to be a separate charge. Like you, it's like an add-on, so like a it's not just the games what? all freewheeling going into the fourteen ninety nine a month, which I'm is sorry. like no, that's what wait. Originally, that's what how could it be part of Game Pass if it costs extra? Jim announced that game will be coming to Xbox Game Pass at launch. It, it, yeah, it originally released for fourteen ninety nine a month. Yeah, yeah, like that's I its think standalone it is price. Folded in. I, I don't think, think they have a price shit. money at people. Yeah, because they got well, extraction. How... Um, was that um, extraction on day? One. Yeah, Rainbow Six extraction is supposed to be coming yeah. day and date. Which but I the thing they... is, is that what their their Ubisoft Plus service was literally all Ubisoft released games, or was it more like EA's? play thing where you got like early access to the newer ones and then a library of older ones i don't think it was all their games it wasn't no because i've, I've not paid for it i'm not <laughs> yeah ubisoft has a lot of games so like yeah. it is a great deal if you're a ubisoft fan and you were to just buy into this service but like if you have other services it starts to get expensive so mm. if they bring if they fold this into game pass it is an uh, immense value like it's there's there's no if ands or buts about it which is why I wouldn't be surprised if there's an added charge for this specifically. Yeah, because it says it's a separate. Apparently, Ubisoft, the uh, Plus, was only on PC. It's coming to Xbox, but it, it, that it's not going to be part of Game Pass. It's going to be a separate thing. Oh, okay, yeah, I see that. Yeah, the article updated it <laughs> to say it's, being, it's separate to Game Pass. So mm-hmm. they're bringing their service to Xbox, period. Not Xbox Game Pass. But... That new game, Rainbow Six Extraction, right, will be on Game game. Pass. Right, day one. Right, I think that's because I don't think it was selling very well. It wasn't gonna do. Yeah, I don't know if anyone asked for that. Yeah. So Um, yeah, it might have. They probably cut their losses. Like you know what? Let's put it on Game Pass. You know, they might do something like uh, Destiny did, where they it's free for a while. Get if it if it if it gets people hooked, they'll probably pull it off a Game Pass. So that way, the people who were hooked. Well, maybe go and buy it like that type of thing but i don't think it was going to sell very well no. i mean i am interested to try it because uh, you know like we got into rainbow six uh siege quite a bit like that game is fun 
Um, and if this is supposed to be the closest thing to another one, I kind of just want to see what what it is they're doing. But if it's more Left for Dead, like I feel like I've done that a lot, so I'm a little put off. This is more tactical uh, Left for Dead. Uh, I would say with Rainbow Six um, elements to where, but somehow- they're but they're monsters though, right? Like you're, or right. aliens or something. Mm, I think they're aliens. Right. They're a form they of, uh, they're like stuff. an alien zombie. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They're there. like, take, think about a monster. Right. Remove any creativity from that thought. <laughs> that is your enemy. Yeah. <laughs> because I think they had Just... you play with, there was a uh, Rainbow Six event where you played as like these, uh, you played as these monsters. It was kind of like a, uh, um, where you played as Master Chief as like uh, zombies. It was kind of like zombies, pretty much. Mm. You played oh. As these Ooh. creatures, you were super fast, you could jump, you only had melee attacks, um, you couldn't shoot, and the other enemies had to come in and try to destroy the nest. Oh, so this is basically a spin-off. Okay. Well, I think they did that in to promote this game. Yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Not the other way around, where they just right. took a mod and mm-hmm. just made a game out of it. Huh. huh. So that's interesting. If they could if they could do kind of a remix game type in Siege to make the next game that they're releasing, why didn't they just make this sort of an add-on to Siege? Like that's a game mode that you can play in Siege cuz Siege doesn't have like a single player co-op thing. Well, I mean they have bots, but that's it. Yeah, but like why it's not Overwatch fun. <laughs> why make Overwatch 2? It's just money. Right. They right. Overwatch is doing the same thing. They're releasing a new product, and it's it's even being a part of the first game. It just has more characters and more maps and a single player. Well, why isn't it mm. just DLC? It's because they just want a f- to box it up and sell it full price. But I mean, in 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 the case of Overwatch Two, it might as well be DLC because they plan to oh, release no, I that. Agree. I agree. Yeah, within the same launcher. The yeah. fact that Ubisoft is breaking this out into something separate yeah. seems weird because they have you know their ga- big game and service title that they could lump it in with and be like, hey, if you like this game, try this new expansion, fifteen bucks, and you're and you unlock this big menu item in Siege that you'll see for perpetuity if you play Siege. But if you pay fifteen dollars now, then you get to play the single player thing. Like if that anything, makes more sense more to me. Failed. Right. But your yeah. Way. Right. Yeah. So th- this just seems like an odd decision. You've got free advertising. <laughs> Everyone who plays Siege, which is going to be the majority of the people wanting to purchase it, are going to mm-hmm. see it in the launcher. Yep. Oh, right. but let's real, be real. They're going to have an advert there in Siege now. Like, go get Extraction. Like, <laughs> yeah, they did a whole agree, game type yeah. event. So, like, I don't know. This, this seems odd. Like, someone someone missed uh, <laughs> the connective tissue here, I think. <laughs> they're trying to get into that whole... Uh genre where i guess they're trying to establish this as its own thing and then let stuff branch off from it mm. uh, but that's going to be a little bit difficult because all people only care about rainbow six because of rainbow six siege right now so like you're adding something new where it doesn't force people to really care about it you know what i'm saying like maybe mm. they came out with an anime or something first i don't know and then came out with this like that could have been like a bridge but like you're interested in this new like Completely PVE shoot a team shooter that's similar to Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead just came out a little while ago. Like, what is it doing differently? Because I watched the trailer for it, and it, it seems a little interesting. Like, it's not a very easy game if you're not playing like team oriented. Like, it's very like it it rewards teamwork and punishes like that solo play aspect of it. So you definitely have well, to go in as a team to play this. Otherwise. I think a lot of these new Left 4 Dead uh, copycats do that exact thing. Like, Back 4 Blood is weirdly difficult when you're not coordinating <laughs> with your team. <laughs> like, we couldn't yep. get past, like, the first level on game night because we were just trying to fuck around. And, like, <laughs> the game was not <laughs> having it. <laughs> no, I remember that, yeah. That like, you better take this seriously. Uh, Wraithbow in the chat says, less money reasons may have had game engine changes. That's a good point. Because when you think about it, Rainbow Six Siege is very old. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's, yeah, that's a very old looks game. Like a hard clone of it looks exactly the same. Like I, <laughs> I, I think if it was a game engine change, they would have kind of mixed it up a little bit. It does look like a hard copy of Siege. So it, in my eyes, it's more of a they have added a game mode effectively, and they're selling it as a product. And I, yeah, I don't know. Unless there are confirmations that it isn't uh, a game engine change. 
because I'm not sure what engine they're yeah, that, using. That, yeah, that I've not heard. So, but that's, that's an interesting point that I hadn't thought of before. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. I, now that I'm thinking about it, like, Rainbow Six, it's been out forever. And, like, we're in a whole oh, new wow. generation of consoles. Okay. They may they may want to start making new things on it. And, like, Cyber that my camera back. It could be a $15. No worries. Version. They could still charge 40 bucks. I think it's 40 bucks. I don't think it, it's, it's not at 60 yeah, I, it's, yeah, I don't think it's a full price thing, is it? Yeah. It's, Ooh, it but, better not be. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I think it was going to be, and they saw how they weren't going to—they weren't doing very well as far as like pre-orders and stuff go. So they probably dropped it down. Oh, the- yeah, they, they lowered the price, didn't they? Because like I remember yeah. seeing a, a thing like people who pre-ordered it got a message saying like, "Oh, your pre-order is going to be canceled, and we're going to drop it to the newer, lower price." Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, but what do you get for buying the game? Because like I bought Siege, and I have less than half of the characters you can have (laughs) so okay it might be a like not full price but what slice of the game are you getting yeah because that's where they want their like i I feel like that's a terrible oh go ahead they make it more attractive to people to buy like you know people might be more open to spending 40 bucks on something they haven't really i don't remember if there was a beta um but they might be open to spend 40 bucks as opposed to 60. For that exact same reason that a 40 bucks to me feels like is like dlc price to a certain extent you know what i'm saying like that's expensive dlc bucks? in my opinion yeah it wow <laughs> Exp- like, expansion like world yeah. of warcraft expansion yeah right know? like 60 bucks is like that's a whole new standalone game that i should be able to pray for at least a couple months like 40 bucks i could live with a little bit closer 29 even better but 40 sounds better than 60 like when you think it's, about it it's a very specific number well okay i mean uh anything else we want to add to this particular situation because honestly this was kind of just a misreport that we've just cleared up <laughs> <laughs> i think it's interesting to think about our misreading of it which was <laughs> could could Ubisoft Plus come to Game Pass one day? Right. And are they getting the sales they want? Because Game Pass is with now that as EA play as well is an unbelievable deal for a lot of gamers and it's it's I think where a lot of gamers money is going nowadays because mm-hmm. not everyone's playing games like us where we're consuming games almost every day and just burning through games because it's our jobs, right? Mm. A lot of people are just getting Game Pass and then playing on the weekend for a few hours, and it's a lot more affordable for them, and they're still getting to play the same games. Is it going to get to the point where Ubisoft are going to be like, okay, we'll take Xbox's money and we'll fold it in, and we'll make a little bit more money there to think of a future like that? Because I remember, I think it was a few Sigma shows ago when we were talking about PlayStation starting their new service. Right. When when I saw this, I was like, oh, PlayStation are fucked. Like... <laughs> If <laughs> if Ubisoft also got folded into Xbox, there's no way they could compete because mm-hmm. there would be thousands of games. Yeah, yeah, like easily thousands. And the thing is, Ubisoft has always been like it's part, it's in their name, ubiquitous software. Like they jump headfirst into every new thing. Period. Point blank. Yeah. Period. So they've already had a ton of games that just hang out on Game Pass. When they started this kind of separate service, I don't think that took away many of those games. Like you could still play like I think old Assassin's Creeds and uh, also like Rainbow Six, yeah like Rainbow Six Siege was on Game Pass for like a long time as, as well too, so it's it's not like even that big of a leap for them to say all right we'll just have the rest of them right yeah so I don't know I I do think I don't think Ubisoft Plus is gonna last on its own for for much longer so I do think this this is probably inevitable but at that point. I would not be surprised about a subscription uh, price upgrade. Yeah, an extra five or ten dollars. Yeah, a month five or ten. Get, yeah, like, I wouldn't be surprised to get if that happened. EA and Ubisoft or something. Exactly, because that because like that's like almost the whole industry. Like, <laughs> yeah, you got okay. two two of the biggest publishers out of like the plus Bethesda. Oh my god! Like, there's so many games on game. <laughs> pay pay fifteen dollars and have access to every game that's ever been released ever. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Uh, sure, I'll never buy that's, a game again. Let's go. That, that's what Stadia should have did. Like Stadia should have been something similar to that. You pay, yep. I don't care, thirty bucks a month, and you get access to all these games. I'd have easily done that. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. 
Stadia should have done a lot of stuff, and they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was just one of them. <sighs> okay, I don't want to right. bring down the mood on Game Pass, no, go ahead. but like, <laughs> I feel like they need to get it working before they are adding new services to it. We well, you're you're talking specifically about PC. Yeah, PC. Oh. I, it yeah. might work fine on on Xbox, but like, uh, Elise, who also does three MR. Has a video. At least Avery uh, has a video about all the problems with Game Pass. Oh, lovely! Link it. Uh, like yes, yes, yeah, link that. I need to see and that. more. Uh, <laughs> it's like it. In theory, yeah, but in practice, no. Like, what, what problems have you had specifically? So I've had me specifically. Uh, I put a little video. I made a little uh, super cut. I played Dead Space. Yeah. And uh, corpses are flying around me uh, like drones at a convention. They're like spinning. Um, it is really, it's funny. Um, but also, it it first added to the mood because I never knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and then it made me realize Dead Space is not a horror game. It's not scary at all. And I also don't actually like it. Uh, and Facing everything notes. cool about Dead Space came from oopsies and glitches that actually made it interesting. Are you telling me that Dead Space is the Cyberpunk 2077 of horror games? Oh, uh, That's no, because the Shit, glitches are down. new. The, these yeah, glitches the... aren't actually like part of the thing. It's like this is new stuff uh, that was not as big a deal when it came out. Yeah, yeah. So it's, even, it's, but it's the reverse. It's, it's specifically that version too, because yeah, I I, I recently also played through Dead Space on stream, um, mm -hmm. and I used uh, Xbox Game Pass's EA Play backwards compatibility, whatever, on console worked perfectly fine. I actually enjoyed yeah. it. So like the fact PC that it's version. that night and day between the console version and the PC version, like that is problematic. Yeah. Yeah, but is and that like, specifically a Xbox Game Pass problem, or is that a PC port problem? Uh, can or, or, is that that? EA, or is that an EA Play problem? I'm, well, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say it's all of those, because I'm paying Xbox and EA to play the game, and they're delivering an ass job. So yes, it is their fault. All right, I'll, I can dig that. <laughs> like, I, if, I can get behind that. If uh, VTM Bloodlines doesn't work when I buy it on Steam... That's a Steam problem because they sold it to me. <laughs> if I've they're making that, money, it's their enough. problem. I've seen it with newer games, the Game Pass, like you know, um, what was the first one? Uh, Ascent. The Ascent, yeah. That had some issues with it at first, but it was also like day one. You know, um, I, there's been some other games here and there that haven't worked the best. I remember a couple times Blue was supposed to stream something and it wouldn't work like day one when he tried to stream it off a of Game Pass. Um, to me, those are like outliners to where they're like far and in between. Like out of 100 games, like maybe like seven or eight of those might do that. And most of the time it was games that were available at like one o'clock that day and you're trying to play that one o'clock that day or two o'clock, whatever it is, and you're encountering some bugs. Um I think that to me, I think that's more the developer. Um, for me, it was Ascent was like uh, it kept crashing or wouldn't let me and him play like co-op. He was playing on PC Game Pass. I was playing on um, Xbox and we were trying to play together and it just would not work. Um, mm. But it was supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Right. And then two days later, it worked after a patch <laughs> or whatever it was. But, you know, little things like that, um, which to me is expected even if you're playing not on Game Pass. If you just bought that game, you're going to get some of those bugs to start out with. That's why a lot of games have like day one patches. Yeah, games are always made with stuff called known shippables, which are bugs that are you could feasibly release with. Um, but the problem with a lot of the games, like Dead Space, is so old, and they're usually made with proprietary engines where going back and changing things is very, very difficult. Mm. And, they, and it, I'm not saying that's an excuse because... EA or Xbox should be putting the money in to pay someone to go back and fix the product. Um, but they are uh, expensive to go back and fix. But like I said, it's not an excuse. They should be doing that. You are being sold a product. The product should be. <clears throat> yeah. Right. 
But okay, so we'll we'll move on to our final topic. Uh, we're gonna try to make sure we wrap up today right on the hour mark. So we got about nine minutes to to get through this. Uh, but this should be fine. Uh, more video game TV shows on the way. Uh, Fallout. I know Ooh. Jesse's a fan. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Jesse's been engrossed in the Fallout world for some time now. Uh, are you excited for a Fallout TV show? You know, okay, kind of no, <laughs> but here's the thing. My friend Blight calls, uh, have you seen the movie The Book of Eli? Yes. yes. That's the, he calls that the unofficial Fallout movie. I, and I, completely, I agree. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a good post-apocalyptic setting. It's got a good twist, great characters, solid story. That's basically everything I want out of a Fallout show, Mm -hmm. including a story I haven't heard before. Right. And so an actual Fallout show makes me worry that it's going to be like, hey, remember all these things from the game? We're going to redo them. And that's less interesting to me. Um, I'm not super into Fallout. Like, I got really into Fallout 3 because... It was an early open world game for me, and I was like, this is blowing my mind. Right. And there's really cool things about the Fallout world, but it's all the wacky stuff to me, like the ghouls um, that you can talk to, like freaking the person who turns into a tree, the like <laughs> people that are like ha- like just mounds of flesh and tech and are making noises at you. That's the cool stuff that I really like. The vaults. Neat idea, okay, but like it, it doesn't captivate me like those, and right. so I, I think it could be good. Anyone who's a good writer can tell a good story out of that. Um, good actors can pull it through. Good direction can sell it. Could be great. Would love it to be awesome. I always vote for stuff to be good rather than bad. Hating on stuff isn't nearly as much fun as enjoying it. Preach. Um, but talk, like, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, like I, it, it just needs more than the IP for me. Okay. See, for me, How about you, Jeff? I know you're also a big fan. Yeah. Yeah, I loved. I think Fallout Four. I got all the DLC. I played three. I. It was very early in the Xbox 360. I think I mm-hmm. actually got three for like Casey or uh, or our buddy Chris. I don't remember who which one it was, but uh, I probably Chris. Yeah, I didn't play it much, but when four came out, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna play four, and I loved four. I played all the DLC, uh, running around catching Death Claws and um, domesticating them. Like, there's so many interesting factions in Fallout that I think it could work. It doesn't need to have, like, a central... It doesn't need to follow the games. Like, you have the railroad, which was... So, basically, in the Fallout world, where, like, in the real world, we have, like, you know, racism. Um, they've kind of geared that towards the synths, with our, which are non-synthetic beings they're like you know uh um cyborgs and robots who some look like humans so they're pretty much you know um discriminated against and uh mistreated and so you have like the railroad you know akin to the underground railroad who helps since Mm -hmm. um you have the uh the um i was about to say the dark the dark brotherhood but that's not what it is the brotherhood of steel (laughs) yes the dark brotherhood I was like, wait, where am I going? Where am I going? Um, the Brotherhood of Steel, who believes in human superiority, like they want to destroy all the sense. You had the Institute, who uh, employed sense, you know, as um, they created them for the most part, used them as assassins and stuff like that. You also had uh, There was another group. Can't think of it right now. But you had like interesting characters who were simps, like Valentine, who was a synth who was like had like a uh, a sixties like noir like um, detective personality to him. Uh, you actually. Well, do you do do you think that any like named character like is needed for this? Because like because like you were saying, like they have a really good world and they have really good factions and stuff. Mm-hmm. If they just completely blanketed an original story, like just set in like the fallout universe right. using those assets i think it could work because well, i can't I tell you the that. name of anybody yeah. I've never fallout. Seen that. For exactly sure. like i never see fallout as oh this person's going like shepherd like when you think of shepherd you think of mass effect when i think of fallout i just think about the world i don't really think about right. any mm-hmm. individual character exactly yeah, yeah. The, the, the only characters i can think of oh go ahead oh, yeah, so you guys... oh i was just gonna say the only characters i can think of are the ones that i named Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're creating your own character, and I think there's so many 
like Jeff was saying, there's so many factions that could create little pockets of narratives that could make really good standalone um, episodes or villains for a season, like the Vaults, the Synths, and uh, the Brotherhood of Steel, like all of these different factions. I could see that lending itself really nicely to crafting a episodic narrative, mm-hmm. but it's just whether that happens because I could also see it. Do you know when you first get out of the vault in Fallout 4 and you first start building the settlements and it, it's really dry and it's yes. really like you're kind of just talking to someone in like a with, fucked up parking lot? Right, with the minimum. It could evolve into that. It could take them a while to get to anything interesting. Mm. But. I don't know. So I reckon they could do it. It's just whether they get the right creative team mm-hmm. to actually to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, oh, like, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No, go, uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying yes to what kind of what Jeff was saying and and Jumate too. That like the world is cool. So like, yeah, that boy howdy. Because for a person like me, like I'm familiar with the Brotherhood of Steel. And know that I should hate them. Uh, and that's, you know, and I know there's like a few other factions. And if they sell it on, look at these factions, aren't they neat? Or sell it on, you should know information about them. A person like me, with even a passing knowledge or less knowledge than me, is, isn't going to care. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got to build it from the ground up in the show. Mm-hmm. Why I hate the Brotherhood of Steel, but why I know they're necessary. Mm-hmm. That's why it's good not to bring any references to characters. Just right. get whole new characters in those factions. Like the idea of just ghouls and that they exist in the world is stupidly interesting and that they've survived mm-hmm. for that time. And having that in a show and like since ghouls and all of these different factions, you can have some really interesting characters exploring interesting themes. Oh, yeah. In its own self-contained narrative, but if they start bringing in Valentine and he is just kind of being a caricature right. of what he was in the games, he is great in the games because of the quests you go on with him mm-hmm. and the time you spend with him. You'll in a show you're never going to be able to get that much time with a character unless they're the protagonist. So mm-hmm. it's just going to be half-assed. So just spread it out, make some new stuff, and let viewers who have never played the games really get engrossed in in that world as well. Like Jesse said. And I would love there to be, like, no clear line on who's right and who's wrong. Like, each one has things mm-hmm. that, yeah, I can understand that. And then things that, like, uh, they went a little bit too far. But I understand what's going on. Like, I love that type of feel where while I might be working with some a, a group, you know, I might see why, you know, I get you – know, I become a prisoner with a, someone from another group who gets stranded somewhere by some, some – uh, some super mutants or something, and, and he and I starts to hear why he hates synths and all this good stuff, and I kind of understand. While I don't condone it, I understand how he came to that decision, like stuff like that. Like I don't want to, yeah, have just a good clear, story, yeah, a, yeah, a clear, you know, antagonist, a group that, like, you know, oh, you know, this is um, what's the name from Walking Dead? Uh, what was his name? Uh, Negan. Negan. Yeah, like Negan and his boys. Those are the bad guys. Like, no, I want to know, like. There is no clear cut bad guy until there is, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, the world works. Uh, just tell us good stories in that world. Show will be a success. Easy slam dunk. They, I think they they lucked out with with grabbing this if they do it right. And this is a show yeah. that isn't that hard to do right. I feel like right, like the like it, you just have a setting that is interesting. Just write a good story in it. Also, it's oh. Amazon too. It's Amazon, so Amazon's I mean, been. They've had they've had hits and misses, so I I don't know which way that's I, gonna I, go. I feel like they've had more hits than misses. I mean, you know, the, what, what what would you consider a miss? Their games have been missing. Oh well, yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> but they're the reverse. I think they're the complete reverse. It's been in history. It's been we can't make t- uh, film or TV about video games, and the video games are, are better. Amazon seem to be the opposite. They can't make games for shit, <laughs> but they can hopefully make shows about games like nobody else can. Because because Amazon also has the the Mass Effect show coming, right? That's them. Yeah. Oh, do yeah. they? Oh, yeah. dang. So now um, we talked about Will of Time, but like just the the world building in that. Like I didn't read the books, but like as the show was going on, I learned more and more about the world without being a, a separate detour. 
as these characters mm-hmm. were taking a journey, I learned about the world kind of almost the same as them. So it was very like if they do it like that, that's going to be great because I think it had the such amazing pacing in 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 um, the Wheel of Time. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, but with that, I think we have reached time. Uh, so we'll we'll save the Scott Pilgrim stuff until I guess more comes out about that project. Um, I for mean, sure, I'll that, keep an eye on it. Not it's not that important. <laughs> whatever. Oh. <laughs> it's the most important. Oh. Uh, whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll move on. How can you say that about Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> <laughs> but Jay, mate, what do you have coming up that you want folks to check out? I, I will tell you once my. I, I kind of want my <laughs> camera to be working for this. That'll be great. <laughs> Fuck and my go. life. Hello. There we go. <laughs> um, what do I have coming up? Shit, that's a good, that's a that's a good point. What do I have coming up? Uh, I'm going to be working on a new uh, anatomy episode, Anatomy of Demon Souls. That's going to be out on the Escapist at some point. Yeah, at some point, and uh, I have an episode uh, straight after this. I'm going to be recording an episode of my podcast, Game Design Discussion Time. And that'll be up on my channel in the next couple of days. Uh, so cool. check that out and uh, just check out everything that these wonderful people are making. That's what I want. Thank you. Nice plug Ooh. for all of us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, how about you, Jesse? What do you got coming up that's more specific that you want folks to check out? <laughs> well, whatever I say, you have to check out because Jemate said so. So Yeah. This is true. I've, I've decreed it. <laughs> um, I've got uh, streams over on my channel, which is twitch.tv slash RexConJesse. I've been doing dark polls mm. in the Monday and Tuesday morning or afternoon or whatever time it is for you. It's afternoon morning for me. Uh, so people in chat can suggest something and then everybody in chat votes yay or nay. And if it passes, I have to do it. Uh, and it's been really fun because I'm so familiar with dark souls and this has made me look at it in new ways. And so I, like when I say I've been thinking about playing again, like doing this again all week, every single day, I was like, yeah, I wish I was streaming that today. Like every day <laughs> I've been thinking about it. It's been so much fun. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the new episode of Behind Schedule is out for patrons, and it should be out next week for everybody else. So look out for that. Um, it's on Super Metroid, as it's as I said it would be, because last week our last time was on Metroid. Um, and Grinderbrin's Mobile Market of Ridiculous Magic Items is on RexionJesse.itch.io. Uh, you get that, and I started a new show, uh, World Building Wednesdays. Uh, mm-hmm. So RPG Help Desk doing a bunch of stuff with RPG stuff on Wednesdays, doing live stream. We started building a uh, campaign setting where it's a fantasy adventure, but all the player characters are going to be little bugs and they're going to be in a little bug world. And like, so the monsters are like cats and squirrels and bigger bugs. It's Hmm. really good. I was there for that stream. It was wonderful. Check it out. Check that out. Wednesdays. Yep. Wednesday. So my normal street time is uh, 11 to two uh, uh, Eastern time. So I do it then 11 to two ish. Or 11 to 1. I do it a little bit shorter on that one. Nice. How about you, Jeff? What do you got coming up this week that folks should check out? Oh, uh, yep, yep. Uh, Monday, 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 Monday. I'm going to do something on Monday. Uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be. This week, I'm trying to establish a community game night for uh, the open party. We're going to be doing some Magic the Gathering. So anybody who plays Magic and would like to play Magic Arena, come through. Um, they got a new set coming out next month which is going to be cyberpunk uh, inspired. So you got like uh, cyberpunk ninjas, samurais, some very... Uh, Excuse glow- me? Yeah, <laughs> cyberpunk. I'm sorry. You got some very, very feudal Japan cyberpunk too. So you got like dragons and stuff too. Looks really, really good. A lot of onis. It looks amazing. So oh boy. Um, my favorite aspect of magic has always been the vampire. So with the last um, Innistrad Crimson Vow, I made another vampire deck. So I'm going to be, a couple of us are going to be playing that this week. I'm not sure what day. Um, tomorrow, I'll be doing some something. Not sure what it is. Might do Valhalla. And then <laughs> Thursday, because I'm taking a break from Destiny, because uh, um, I'm trying to get some other stuff in before the Witch Queen comes out, um, February mm-hmm. 25th. So um, maybe Thursday, we'll do some Magic uh, Arena and call it a night. Cool. Can't Sweet. wait for that. That's rad. <clears throat> Uh, so, yeah, uh, as the name suggests, you can find me at Gears 9 uh, right here on Twitch. Uh, but later today, Super Smash Sunday also returns for Super Smash Sunday of the year on the Open Party channel. So uh, make sure you're following over there if you're not already. 2.30 uh, p.m. Eastern, we'll be uh, getting in our sweaty, sweaty boy, 
one v one matches <laughs> and sweaty girls. I don't know. I don't. I don't know sweaty. all the <laughs> genders of our <laughs> players, but. Uh, outside of that, uh, like I mentioned a little earlier, uh, I just wrote an opinion piece for EscapistMagazine.com. Uh, Check that out. Uh, it should be titled, Why Your no your Favorite Video Game Franchises uh, Should Be Allowed to Die. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being subtle at all. Um, you, <laughs> you should stop franchise games. You should stop them. They're bad. Uh, so read that. Um, also, uh, we just started the Dead Space 2 streams uh, this past weekend, uh, this past week. Uh, those are really fun. I'll be back Thursday for to continue that journey. Um, check out Breakout on the Escapist on Wednesdays. Those that's a live po- podcast that I do oh. with Nick and Marty. I forgot to plug something. Oh, go ahead. It's kind of important. <laughs> uh, I I have a new, I have a new series with Marty on the Escapist called Design Del. Right. Starting on oh, yeah, that was on Friday. <laughs> so yeah, that should be starting Friday. Quickly, I should probably plug that. <laughs> See you then. Okay, sorry, carry on. <laughs> No, that's fine, because it's all, all within the week on Escape and stuff, so make sure you're yeah. checking out all that stuff. Um, and pff, I don't know, I should also have a review for Monster Hunter Rise on PC, mm-hmm. I think, this coming week. So keep Sweet. an eye out for that. I, I'm forgetting the uh, embargo date, but yeah. just follow the Discord. Peel. Follow the Discord. <laughs> yeah. There's multiple Discords. Uh, you have the uh, the open party Discord. You have yeah, the open party Discord. Discord. Escape yeah. Discord. There's I mean, Jesse's, I have a uh, Discord. Toronto Chorus Discord. Uh, yeah. Jamie, you have a Discord, right? Yeah, only oh. mates. It's a bit, bit oh. more mates, but it is <laughs> only mates. yeah, there's only mates in there. That's <laughs> that's a good word play. I'm assuming. <laughs> It, it's only mates. I mean, join it if you want. Like, hit me up. How, how much does it cost to join only mates? I didn't think you'd get this. I didn't think you'd get this reaction. Fuck you guys. It is actually only mates. Come join. I, I chat shit in the room. I I th- I thought you were joking. I'm not. I'm not. Wait. I will. I will straight up just. I will wait there. Just for you guys in chat, I'm gonna take a screenshot of the little. Look. It's oh, real. Okay. It's real. I need a link for that because I'm actually not <laughs> yeah, a part of your too. Discord. Okay. But you're yeah, a part so of please, mine, yeah, so please, please send uh, the link. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that reaction. Chat. I'm, not, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny, though. But that's going to do it for episode 51. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk more game news, etc. See you then. Peace. Bye, See everybody. You later,